Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we have a very special guest for our map preview video. Now, you may have already seen the map showcase video and the four new factions video. Do check them out in the description if you haven't already. But today we're here for a deep dive on the map with the man who created the man behind the mapness, if you excuse the pun, terrible pun. But welcome, Joralaf, to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, thank you very much for having me as well. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's great. We're, we're going to be taking a deep dive today on all, a, uh, all aspects, map-wise, how you created the map. Because the map very much is your baby, is it not? Um, yes, but I mean, it's, it's not just me, but um i'm basically it's basically the main thing i'm doing and hopefully um it will stop being the the only thing i'm doing uh after uh 060 releases because uh it's been what two years of constant map work so far yeah fair and <laughs> and uh also a very special mention to kiersey um who yeah. is He's done a a, a a map of his own, and uh, we've he's he's been uh, very very helpful in sharing uh, the textures and also tips on on making the the map look uh, as good as it looks right now. Um, so a lot of uh, like all the textures that we used before we uh, we were using. Um, Maybe there's a bit too deep dive already, but uh, we were using like um, random uh, little wall like Rome 2 and Attila and Troy textures um, that we were picking out. And because we we didn't really have anyone that was doing um, a lot of experimentation on how the yeah. map, the the textures and, and uh, uh, all of this stuff, the, like the... the 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 visual uh how can i put this uh, yeah the the visual uh end game look of the map there, there was no one that was like fully immersed into that because they were busy with other things yeah <laughs> so here see who has done that um uh for his map imperator i think it's called um that goes from uh, europe to uh, India, I think, like the entirety of India. Yeah. Is um, it, is it uh, Imperatoris Mundi? Is that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I have actually covered and that map. I think on on the channel. That's like six hundred regions. I think, isn't it? Map something like that. It's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big. Yeah. Six hundred <laughs> regions. Um. Uh, but yeah. So. But yes. How, how so yeah that's fantastic and I've just been having a little swoop around showing off all the new textures on the map that everyone can see in front of them looking really nice indeed definitely updated definitely uh, newer than it, how it looked in uh, 0.5 but i think the big question everyone is wondering <laughs> including me because i haven't had a solid answer from anyone quite yet how big actually is the map how many regions are in the map currently um let me just calculate that for a second <laughs> see uh, when we're not completely done yet i don't think actually yeah but... like there's like 10 or so that needs to be need to be added maybe a bit more but um yeah let so, me see. so asal oh. a, sorry asal a howl basically said to me that you know the map's pretty much done at this point it's just a few tweaks here and there that are going to come in but no further huge amount of map <laughs> expansion i guess is planned for yep. the future that's right. Um, um, so right now, apparently, we have um, seventy. Uh, sorry, a thousand yep. seven hundred nineteen regions in the in the map right now. It's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that definitely is the largest total war map ever made. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, if anyone out there knows any larger total war maps, I believe that's even bigger than Warhammer Three. Uh, so with uh with the uh, dlc whatever it's called i can't can't quite remember but um yeah i believe that's the biggest total war map that's ever been made which is pretty crazy to be fair <laughs> so how long did it take you to fight to, to finally get to the the end stage of this monstrous and 
pretty beautiful map. So what happened was we started using Mundus Magnus at first for our first few versions up until 0 0.4. Um, and we started working on our own map in the background um, uh, because um, we wanted to go to like the max for the engine, which was in terms of uh, the regions, the the there's a file called map regions which uh, defines the area of the map basically like width, width and, and height yeah. and uh, it used to be 510 by 350 mm. and so we were working on this for like uh, about a year until um someone was like hmm we actually don't know if we have a, a like someone at Feral was like we actually don't know if we have a hard coded limit anymore. Oh really? With with That's like bad. the map size and maybe someone can test that. And I was like, <laughs> hmm, okay, maybe I'll try that. And then at some point after like a month of of testing, I discovered that doubling the 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 length and width so like instead of 510 by 350 it would be uh 1020 by 750 so like Oof. four times the area yeah, and wow. uh, it worked yeah like <laughs> and then we were like oh okay it works so um i guess we just transfer all, all the work we've done so far to the new one and then um we did and uh because we were working like we were working on the map adding the cities for this smaller smaller scale map yeah um things um there, there were suddenly there was a lot more room and for for more stuff and we were like okay we have to loop back around and and start working on on the uh, on the regions we already thought we had finished once more and see what what else um could be nice to add um um so yeah that's so i guess that took another year of of work i think um i think uh remastered came on, in april yeah of 2021 yeah i think i, uh, I think so yeah <laughs> I, can't, I can't quite remember but it was two years ago like uh, at this point yeah. I, I don't really remember how many years ago it was but basically since like august or something we've been working on on uh creating an, a new map and like yeah that's august now so <laughs> yeah basically two years of work uh, so researching and and uh a lot of time is spent on research so a lot of researching a lot of um figuring out the 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 like the the geography uh well figuring out the like the climate the yeah. the geography of 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 the map so what what sort of data we would use to to generate all of that etc so mm. yeah so i think uh, i think 0.5 <laughs> had about 900 regions or so was it about 900 um yeah so it's the same size of map yeah and it was with the regions that we had added for the smaller scale map um and we did have about 900 or something maybe a thousand like uh, yeah. somewhere in the in the 1000 range um and now yeah. you've pretty much nearly doubled that <laughs> yeah yeah i mean but... we the, the thing is the the map we were working on it was the area was four times smaller like because yeah. it, it squares instead of doubling the length it, it squares to four times the area mm. um and yeah now there was a lot more space that we could use for new cities and uh, it's, it was a lot more interesting to to see what we could add um yeah yeah oh cool fantastic well you know a lot of those settlements have been added i mean a lot more than like <laughs> pretty much one settlement for every settlement you had before in 0 0.5 but how did you end up deciding which settlements to add like the history behind it all that sort of thing like how did you end up adding certain settlements and leaving some out i guess as well um, yeah 
a lot of a lot of those living out were painful for some like <laughs> for a lot of people there's a lot of argument uh yeah. because maybe a settlement was important but at some point we were like you can't really fit it it's it's not possible like we also need to be aware that um you know this uh you can't like you can't really make it so that every single tile is uh, every other tile is a settlement like that's just uh, not gonna be very playable so um there was the spreadsheet that we had we still well, the spreadsheet that we have because yeah. we're still working on it for the last few cities <laughs> we basically went through and uh on the first round with the smaller map people just thought about and research what cities for each specific region like so let's say italy or oh, mm. there's the settlements i'm gonna add them uh, one row per settlement as a suggestion and then someone would go and do the historical research how important it was how much value would be to add it yeah. and then i would after after all that was done i would i would take a look i would check the 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 room for the cities and and then be like hmm this this works this is fine um this doesn't work and i was also part of the i was doing also part of the research as well um so i would also look at uh, things that could also be added that maybe someone um uh, didn't like yeah. someone just uh, uh overlooked perhaps for one reason or another like you know we we only have like uh, we only had at that point like three four people as historian researchers history researchers yeah so it was <laughs> very hard work for everyone involved for doing the research for all these settlements yeah and cool, I can uh, imagine. <laughs> for instance sometimes i think for the um i did the majority of the research for arabia at for the small um but like the the smaller map that we didn't end up releasing because we moved on to the larger one immediately yeah. um and that took me like a month to do wow because i was doing it myself and i was uh i had to you know i had to go through cities uh through the ancient sources see what cities they mentioned if any um they do mention a few but then i was like um okay now we need to figure out oh this ancient geographer was like building a map of all these cities and i need to figure out wait does this city um like can we can we use maybe the name that this geographer gave us to the city that doesn't have a name and a lot of these is basically that it's either like um ptolemy's geography has a lot of cities and a lot of city names and we're like okay there's this archaeological site or there's this historical city that doesn't have its have an ancient name can we just see if we can adapt it and at some point um at some point we just ended up having like uh calling some things just generic names you know like in vanilla you have like campus yeah Kithy or something so we basically did that as well because we just couldn't like this is, at some point you just can't really unless you want to use a modern name which always always is a bit um very strange to go from like or say it i don't know um going from hella to yeah i don't know some sort of uh um modern arabic name or yeah uh, it's a modern spanish name it's like london uh, to london <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly or yeah so it's it's um a lot of a lot of those city names are real some cities are just actually it's like oh ptolemy talks about a city there and we don't really have anything they just place it well, if you can find an archaeological site uh you know like an ancient settlement place it there if not then yeah just find a decent spot and just put it down it's yeah. fine yeah it's, exactly yeah. so a lot of back and forth between you and the historians i guess on all these and all these cities and uh obviously deciding the size of them as well i guess 
for a lot of them, they're just small, smaller ancient sites. So you probably just use the use the sources and that sort of thing to uh, uh, to find out, you know, sort of how big they were at the time and and all that sort of thing. Did you use any? Um, s- sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. It's I was going to say, in terms of the sources, I'm guessing you just used the, the you know the historians and the sources they had on hand to kind of grade the cities and and say this is a town or this was a large town this is you know more likely to be a uh, a large city uh, or well there's not really any large cities but minor city that sort of thing um so right now i think for 060 we have um have a preliminary um set like uh, i think ahel and uh, other other models went through the the list of cities and um he was just like uh going through them and differentiating them based on what he could find quickly just because trying to go through each settlement like that it would take a lot of time and yeah um since uh, you know we released we we we're releasing very soon october um so it's it the, there wasn't really like huge in-depth research but the thing is uh we did have that research for the previous settlements for 050 yeah and after all those settlements we basically just uh like the settlements we're adding are not going to be bigger or more important than the ones we added before of course so like yeah. you know we we already had like the top settlements yeah. Now we, we're we're uh, filling filling up the area with them. Um, so you had the base um, the, the base settlements like the you yeah. know all, all the important ones that were larger yes. settlements and then you know a lot of the ones that you've added now are more sort of smaller ones or ones yeah. you know mentioned a lot less I guess than uh, mm-hmm. than some of the big ones. I mean, of course, like you know adding uh, sort of uh, Olymp- well we already had Olympia didn't we? But adding Ellis and stuff that's that's uh, that's really cool. So I would, I would say maybe like in Sparta you have Sparta obviously we yeah. we know a lot, but uh, you also have the port of Gethium and then Prasiae, yeah. um, which you know um, a lot less important, a lot less notable. Yeah. Um, even if Sparta wasn't a big, <laughs> a very well populated yeah. town, you at least know that the other the other towns in in, in the region would probably be a lot less populated. Yeah, even, even so like. So. Prasai here is a town. Obviously, I'm playing as the Antigone, so I can see actually what they, uh, what they're like. Yeah. Sparta is a large town, and Githian, and like I really like the detail of adding the Piraeus in here as well, next to Athens to. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that was that was a, a request for one of our main historians, just because, um, what Macedon did was uh, they put a garrison in the port of Piraeus yeah. uh, in Athens to keep it under control. After the Carmonidin War, I think, or no, no, it was. Uh, well, I think it was the. I don't. I don't remember. There's so many wars. Yeah, there is a lot of the, wars in this time period. Um, I think it was no. I think Carmonidin is like 268 or something. So before that, they put a port into Piraeus. Piraeus, when uh, Athens was defeated, I think in the after Alexander's death and uh yeah we couldn't really do that like we couldn't really replicate that situation yeah. without adding the the city as a city like the Piraeus as a city yeah um so but yeah it's it just little was details a... like little historical details that i love uh with that sort of stuff like it's really 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 cool um yeah but yeah, let's uh, let's let's uh, so let's talk about so a bit of a bit of the work that goes into building these uh, these cities. So I would say like where's where would you say the most work that you had to do in terms of adding new cities? We'll start with that one anyway. <laughs> um, I think uh, it was definitely definitely the most work would probably be in terms of research actually. Um, and that would probably be like the Scythian and the Arabian and the Ethiopian and you know Taran Basin areas really because yeah. you, you have to do a lot of research to figure out I mean basically you know the the tribes that that people mention were there 
but then yeah. obviously because they were nomadic you don't mm. really have a a um a big settlement you know a city like i don't know um so uh at least in this in the in terms of Scythia, um yeah. you you need to like maybe look up ancient burial grounds and be like okay i guess we're putting a city there just because um we have to we have to make <laughs> make it somehow yeah um but perhaps in terms of the most work and uh when it comes to discussions of what to add and what to remove would be greece because yeah. you know greece is like completely densed up with cities with a lot of different tribes because obviously they knew each other and they mm. knew a lot of the the inner divisions more than you know let's say the the thracians or the scythians and people like the historians ancient historians would obviously talk more about greece than they would i don't know some uh, more remote place from them uh they that that they've never really seen or yeah. even probably heard about very well so yeah a lot of discussion with what to add uh what to keep what was important to to have yeah um like maybe the uh big big issue was you know um the peloponnese because it's like mm. so many different players there at this period you have the Achaea league you have sparta you have uh you have macedon um yeah and uh the Aetolians also nearby as well so there's like um a lot of possible settlements you know the mentions of of the settlement was captured the settlement was uh uh destroyed this this one like um you know and we can't really add every single one but yeah we especially because of the terrain because it's so mountainous in game you need to make sure that cities connect and you can access them um easily enough um so uh, a lot of discussion went into um what uh what could be added for for, for this huge region not a, um and uh you know yeah like we had i i managed to sneak in uh, i think it was sikion because uh, uh, um, Corinth is so close by that, you know, you have Tegea, you yeah. have Mantine <laughs> and Orchomenus. Like, um, I think, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I think you're, the three cities that you see, like, in the middle of the Peloponnese, and it's like, you need to figure out. We, we actually had one more there, I think. Yeah. I don't remember which one we removed in the end. I think we removed Orchomenus in Arcadia. Yeah. Um, once the turn ends, I Greetings. probably can... Yeah, I'll just, uh, just, uh, oh, oh, go thanks. on Sparta, I'll take your trade. Um, I just, <laughs> just trying to show off the different seasons as well, so that's why I've ended yeah. the turn there. Yeah, uh, so we have four turns per year as well now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a first reveal or if it's a, uh, I don't remember if we've mentioned it before. I probably have, but you know, now it's like it might be the first showcasing. <laughs> it might be the first reveal. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh, it might have been. It might have been revealed in the uh, in the two previous videos to this. But <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah. So when when you're making a region as well, what goes into maybe. the region? So because it's not just a settlement, is it? There's there's other oh, stuff thanks. that comes in there as well, and and. Uh, you know, what's the sort of process to creating one of these brand new regions on the map? Um, so, do you, do you mean like, in terms of region, you mean like in-game region, what the game understands as a region, you know, like Pella and Macedonia as, yeah, as a yeah, region? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not not a whole area. Yeah. Like just one, yeah, okay. one city with its border of a region around it. Um, so the first thing is, of course, generating the code, which we do it from the spreadsheet. Uh, the spreadsheet has a column that uh, has like um, default code generated. So like it has default fertilities and, and religion, which we use as culture here in, in, in RIS. Yeah. Um, and uh, we generate that. Uh, the code for that with the color code and then in the regions map as uh, a file that we 
draw in the regions basically and what what I do because I'm I'm the one who draws the regions. Um I look at uh the historical uh, extent of a region, let's say. Yeah. Um a, a lot of looking up uh, ancient geographers and and maybe mm. uh I mean obviously uh the the first shortcut is wikipedia and yeah. after that <laughs> you know you go and and see what what people say uh what ancient uh, people said about the region um we there's uh making sure that they have pathing available so like you can access it um uh you can access the city that uh the city is is connected like there's maybe a, a crossing through the river where the trade uh, yeah. carts can pass um and after that uh will will there's the placement of the city as well which is done uh by generating a uh well, in, in most most cases where you actually have a, a specif specific location, um, you generate this file from from a, a mapping application, the GIS application, yeah. where you have the the city location, and then you just go into a editor and compare the like you you get like one or two pixels of where the city should be and you just put it where it's more convenient maybe you need to readjust the rivers to to make it accessible uh maybe you need to carve a path through the the terrain yeah. um and then after that after after that's done then a howl comes in and and has to add it to uh, each faction depending on who owns it and has to add the garrisons and and uh, then does the differentiation between the different regions um so yeah it's a bit uh it's a bit of work yeah um, you know you have to set up the the buildings that it's going to have you need to um you need to also set up um uh the owner the garrison you know you need to have the location of the of the place and in, in game terms to add the the troops yeah. and uh yeah it's i think also hidden hidden resources and fertilities as well um so yeah. it's a it's a huge process um that's why it's taking us so long actually yeah <laughs> and the facilities have all been changed as well from base game haven't they i think um yes I mean, they've been changed from uh, 0 0.5, I'm pretty sure, as yes, well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I think yeah. That's, I think that's a big... Uh, so, I think what before was three fertilities is now, I don't like, remember. nine or something like that? I don't actually remember uh, what uh, 0 0.5.0 actually had whether we had the three fertility system or we already expanded. Yeah. Uh, I think the game allows for 14 fertility levels. Uh, okay, and yeah. I think we're using all 14 now. And I think that's, that's uh, we need to do some economic balancing right now. Cause mm. actually, if you can see your uh, financial situation, you're uh, gaining money with no, th with uh, yeah. no effort at all. So yeah, exactly. we need to make it a bit more difficult, you know, uh, <laughs> because now, yeah because now we have so many more cities to give you income and then they all have more fertility which also adds to your income as well yeah i have noticed that from my beta plays because obviously with the loads more cities obviously it's just more money you make just more money in general so mm -hmm. uh yeah like rome i think in 0 0.5 starts off with like minus eight thousand or something in... um it's minus eleven thousand minus actually. eleven thousand yeah cool so even more but I think yes. now it's like plus 15,000 or something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you do generally, obviously, the more cities there are, the more money you're going to make. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, But at the same time, it's like um, more construction that you need to do if you want to improve on that and more, maybe more recruitment as well that you need to have because all the cities may not all be uh, like may not all all be pleased with being under your control like you can mm. see i think you ha already have a revolt yeah, going on got, in, in got, one of your cities got two going on Megara yeah, so. and argos oh god damn 
The Arg, the the Arg Eve people. They have a lot to answer for. <laughs> they killed Pyrrhus, and now they're rebelling against me. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's all a, ma a matter of finding the right balance for gameplay as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's great. That's fantastic. So you can see just everyone at home, like, if you're watching this, you know how much effort it takes to just make one region. <laughs> Never mind, what was it, 1,700 and what? 1,700 and... Oh, now uh, let me look. Uh, 19. 1719. 1,719 regions. So, yeah. <laughs> you can see how much effort it is to make one. And these guys yes. have pretty much made, you know... Well, the base game's 99. So, you know, yeah. you've made six, more than 1,600 regions, which is just crazy. <laughs> I mean, uh, the old uh, OG Rome hard coded limit was 254 regions. Mm. So that's about um, uh, how many times would that be? Uh, that would be like uh, four times in a thousand, so seven yeah, times. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Seven times more cities than you could at all in. Uh, OG Rome, so yeah, yeah. it's a lot exactly. of a lot of um, thanks to Feral who managed to yeah to unlock all of this as well because it's like all of these hard coded limits just mm. gone and and now we can like experiment and and I mean basically this is kind of what most of everyone on the team has wanted to do for for so long and it's just because the Rome engine wasn't. Uh, really capable we yeah. had to to constrain ourselves but now it's like so much so much opportunity yeah exactly that you can have um and uh yeah i mean it's uh um you, you saw that with um PSC's map where, where you go all the way to like <laughs> The other side of India, and yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's an extended version that goes all the way to China. I don't quite uh, remember. It. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, I definitely, I definitely remember because I did two videos on it. Now that I remember, I did one when he, before he added India, and then one afterwards. Mm. I think anyway. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So yeah. just so many more rivers and uh, geographical features and cities and everything. It's like super, super. Like it's. It's almost a completely different game now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really, um, like, um, but... and if if anyone out there is saying that a, a world conquest isn't possible, I have seen two world conquests on the Discord. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone <laughs> someone managed to do that actually yeah. with uh, which is pretty was... awesome. Rome, Rome. Yeah. I've seen one with Rome. Um, no, two with Rome. Sorry, I've not seen anyone else, but. I think Rome is is the the ideal one to do it because you're in the center of the map to start with. I uh, think you're so powerful. So <laughs> I think one guy called Espor uh, mm. in our server did it with Macedon. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it was a purple faction at least, and yeah. it's either Macedon or, or the Parthians. It must be Macedon. Must yeah. Be, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's impressive, and I mean, you can still do it, and obviously, like. Um, one thing I myself was always uh, a bit annoyed at with, you know, OG Rome model, uh, OG Rome mods, yeah. is that con conquering vast pieces of land and like expanding your empire to like Imperial Rome uh, reach was like a lot easier than it should be yeah. and a lot faster than it should be. And like, I remember factions like, you know, back then, just say, like, you had the Swabii. Yeah. And they would just take over the entirety of Germany, yeah. of modern Germany, very quickly in like, what, 50, 100 years in, in game terms. And it's like, you know, that's a bit, that's a bit, yeah, <laughs> unrealistic. But now, like, you have, this opportunity uh, like you know factions have to expand more slowly just because there's more mm. cities and it feels 
a lot more fluid than than it used to because now you have um you know as rome you have to to grind through sicily like the romans did you have to grind through um the alps like augustus did and you know yeah. you, that that area wasn't conquered until like the the first century uh, mm. ce so you, you know it's like it's a it's a nice it's a nice um uh how can i put this well it's a nice it's a nice um I'm, I have the word on the tip of my tongue. Um, <laughs> so I don't analog to, to to real history, where it's yeah. like you can't really now you can't really conquer that fast, but you can still conquer through the entire thing if you if you really want to. Yeah. It's not completely impossible. It's just you know I think um, perhaps uh, the scope of your campaign when you go into it, you it's you have to you have to approach it differently you have to think okay i'm 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 rome i'm playing as rome but now um it's gonna be far more difficult to to expand and uh there's gonna be so many enemies around me and yeah um, i'm gonna have to uh, i'm not gonna be able to to rush and everything but it's mm. uh it's still gonna be you know uh an expansion you're still gonna expand your empire and um, you can think of it as, you know, you, you just, it's so much land in real life and <laughs> yeah, exactly. you have, to, you have to, you have to do it slowly or maybe you, you come in as, as Macedon and you're like, okay, instead of, um, back then, back when OG Rome, I think most mods were like, you just take over the world. Now it's like, yeah. I'm Macedon. I want to become the hegemon of greece now now mm. that that's my my goal you know yeah. that's that's the goal i i put in for my campaign it's um and uh it's a lot i think it's it's a lot of opportunity for role playing as well yeah. which is always nice but um yeah sometimes you know you, you can't like if you want to conquer the world, you're gonna have to put in a lot of effort for that. But yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to play a campaign as Macedon, you know there's so many different players in your area, and yeah. you never really know how to how things are gonna end up, and and uh, what kind of um, what kind of dynamics will yeah. play out as you try to gobble up the entirety of Greece, and mm -hmm. then maybe you want to move on to to take over the Seleucids and, you know, rebuild Alexander's empire Well, yeah. uh, yeah. So I think, Bending um, off the Thracians and stuff, so, yeah. Like the way, the way I, I, I put it with 0 0.5 or, you know, that everyone would say is, is basically, you know, you go from, you know, vanilla is, is not, not really very hard and there's not many regions and stuff. So world conquest is easy, but if you're playing this mod, you've got to just change your mindset slightly to be, okay, I'm going to do sort of a regional conquest. And you have regional wars, which is a lot more realistic. So, like, for example, the Seleucids, you know, you could get into war with many people around here, but it's likely going to be the Ptolemies down here in the south. So you're going to have a regional war in southern Anatolia. But while that's happening, you might be having a regional war here and it's a big job to conquer all these <laughs> all these settlements in the levant and uh, assyria and down into judea so like you, you've just got to change your mindset um you know people out there who might look at this and be like oh there's too many cities or whatever just change your mindset to be that you're going to do a regional you know regional wars regional conquest you're not going to be you know taking over france the whole of gaul in like two turns like that's not going to happen like gaul's going to be a big job if you're Rome, like, and that's how it should be, in my opinion. So, um, that's how I how I, how I look at it, anyway. <laughs> um, but what would you say, I mean, Joel? Oh, sorry, if I go can on. interject before yeah. the question. Actually, I mean, if you take if you take a small power that didn't really expand very much, mm. like I don't know, Sparta. You know, you're yeah. a Spart You want to play a Sparta, and uh, historically they only expanded up to the middle Peloponnese before they fought back. But imagine, you know um if you want to make them 
into like a world like a like a imperial domain that you know rivals rome you're yeah. gonna have to work th you, you know you have to you're gonna have to start in a historical situation where that really did not happen and probably would not be able to happen so you need to put in that extra effort you know if you're like a, one of the tiny Cretan factions it's like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you i mean you can for for sure make uh the boys. Nossos <laughs> become become a world power but you know that that really did not happen historically you're gonna have to i can't uh, wait put for in the, the effort i can't wait for the screenshot of the nosos world conquest i can't wait yes <laughs> i i can tell you now that that's not going to be me though guys so sorry to disappoint you all but i'm definitely not doing that but <laughs> and if anyone wants to do the nosos world conquest be my guest be my guest <laughs> um yeah so go on go on for the question you were... um, so yeah i was just going to ask like you know, there's a lot of regions. So what would you say to the people that complain that, oh, it's just going to be a siege fest. It's just going to be sieges, that sort of thing. What would you say to them? I, I can understand that because, I mean, sieges in Rome aren't like the most amazing. Like, um, I'm, I myself never really liked sieges that much. I preferred like fighting a, a battle in the open field um in the game and so i can understand what you where you're coming from um what i could say is that um again it's a matter of your outlook you know if mm. um you want to conquer greece greece has a lot of cities but um i mean if your goal is to conquer the world then yes of course you're gonna have to conquer all these cities but um you don't like firstly there's you don't have to assault every city you can no. always just starve them um that's not as efficient of course and um but obviously that uh, can allow you to uh, not have to deal with sieging all of these cities but secondly as well it's like um like I, not to discount the feeling but it's like historically like most wars were just sieges like <laughs> um the the second Macedon the second and third macedonian well mostly the second macedonian war was just a lot of sieges by everyone just going to a city and making it surrender or starving it or assaulting it and then just moving on to the next one because it's you know i think um um it's it's a matter of aligning your goals of expansion yeah. and with the gameplay that is that we're delivering here like um if you want to take over india it's a lot of cities in india there's a lot of people in india and alexander was when he conquered india was just sieging a bunch of places and assaulting yeah. them and um so you know it's 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 obviously a, a trade-off um, having this many cities with, uh, with uh, you know that you have to conquer because I mean, let let's let's say this it's it's there's no way to um, maybe other other games handle conquests in a more regional aspect if you're like yeah. oh defeat this huge army then a lot of sieges will surrender to you or whatever. Mm. Um, and uh or maybe it's like oh you siege a major city and then the minor ones just uh to come over to you instead so it's it's just a limitation of the engine as well um you yeah. know it's carol have done so much work on this but at some point you run into the fact that this is an engine from 2003 or 2004 yeah uh, like two years two years two decades <laughs> from uh, a go that they've made into this amazing thing that you can mod and, and do so so much cool stuff with but um you can't like there's always like the gameplay you can't really you know add too many things like you you can't completely rewrite the engine because then yeah. that's a whole new game yeah, and uh, uh what they have managed to accomplish with this well we've 
taking advantage of it and um i don't know maybe we'll we'll look into um possibilities of you know of i don't not not everyone is on board with this perhaps and like there's some discussion like yeah. i'm not going to say we're going to do it but i always thought of surrender scripts you know if you have mm. an army that's uh, uh that full stack with 20 units sieging a city with only one unit maybe the you just you left your borders undefended you, you have to pay for it or the ai yeah. has to pay for it and they they surrender because they're not going to put up a fight yeah um but of course like that's not that's not that's up to, for discussion and i i would never really promise that we will have that yeah um but it's something that i i myself am partial for and others in the team are not so um you know there's we're we're always discussing yeah um gameplay issues so mm, of course yeah, yeah. but, but I, I think from my perspective is like uh playing 0.5 a lot uh, especially with the Seleucid campaign um like i would say the the, the siege fest is kind of a false flag really I, I don't think i know it sounds silly to say but with this many regions like for me it doesn't add that many more sieges especially now early game yeah you're probably gonna have to do a few but if you're playing in in the updated region in greece you're gonna face a lot of armies to fight uh, rather than cities and a lot of the time you know a small say a smaller place like the aetolian league for example if you come and siege down one of their cities they ain't going to leave you alone. They're going to come and defend it. And on top of that, so then you're going to have a draw out battle, which will be an actual field battle rather than a, you know, rather than a, um, a siege. Um, and then on top of that, you know, a lot of these places, especially the larger empires like the Seleucids, the Ptolemies, they don't run big garrisons because it just costs too much money, of course. So I, I played uh, as Bithynia on an earlier beta and I just absolutely just steamrolled through here. I, I took about... 15 settlements and do you know how many sieges i played like maybe two out of the 15 because i just got to these settlements they got one unit in auto resolve yeah. it it's fine and and during that time i had like three massive epic battles as well it wasn't just like i was just going oh settlement click auto resolve done next settlement click auto resolve done the solutions did come and put up a bit of resistance but i, yeah. I destroyed their army so then it was just a matter of also resolving the sieges so that's always an option like i know if you're playing on very hard very hard even with one unit sometimes you can get a bit screwed by the auto resolve oh yeah uh, but there is nothing to do nothing really um that that can be done with that because if they change the auto resolve to be more favorable then you could just win the game by auto resolving everything even on yeah. very hard so it's th that that's pointless but like yeah, I, I would say that the siege fest thing is kind of a false flag, really. I, I know I understand the concern from people, but at the same time, I think if you play the game, then it, it doesn't actually become true once you've played the game. You just need to play it for a bit. Play 50 turns, and you'll find out that you're fighting way more big battles than you are fighting sieges. Uh, and that's um, not to say that you're going to not fight any sieges. You will do, but yeah, you'll be fighting a lot of big battles as well. And it's also the thing about um, doing uh, starving the garrisons. It's like yeah. you give them time to take the army that they have and then come and fight you and make that a field battle instead of a siege. You know, so it's like you're just waiting for them to respond. If yeah. you if you if you don't need to to take over the settlements quickly. Mm then you just wait for them to respond and then they come with an army and maybe you have another nearby to reinforce it and then you just fight a, a regular field battle with re the reinforcing um, garrison, which is yeah. usually what I do when, when I play. Mm. is like, I just siege, they come and, and attack me and then I yeah. try to destroy the garrison and then that's it, no need to siege anymore. Yeah, um, exactly. I've already captured it, so yeah. Yeah, like... If, uh, for all the people that have watched my Seleucid campaign, link in the description, by the way. <laughs> Classic plug. Um, yeah. Uh, link in the description. Uh, you know that I absolutely love a draw-out battle. One of my favorite things. So <laughs> I love a draw-out battle. So, yeah, I think that's... I mean, it's, it's faster to do that anyway. So that's why I, I like it. But, 
yeah, it's, I, I don't think the Siege Fest thing is really a genuine concern to people who've played the game quite quite a lot. So just play the game, 50 turns, and uh, I can guarantee you that it's not going to be a Siege Fest that you think if you're auto-resolving those sieges against single units. You don't need to play them, um, just auto-resolve them, it's fine. <laughs> I think I played uh, Sparta recently mm. for the beta. Yeah. On my own. Uh, no, it was Messene, actually. Messene, ah, yes. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, and I just took over Sparta. Very Well, Sparta is very easy because it's it's unwalled. <laughs> so you yeah. just walk in um, and then just uh, went through and just made them scatter down to Kisara. Like yeah, the island, uh, yeah. and then they pieced me, and then that was it. And uh, oh, nice. yeah, it was it was, uh, it was fun. I mean, <laughs> there was no like I wouldn't call it a siege first. There was battles, like yeah. obviously uh, battles with the uh, aliens, the the Spartans, and every and everything. So it, it it's not like. Unless you like go and like one unit siege every single town, you're not <laughs> going to be fighting a lot of sieges. No, exactly. Um, per turn, really. No, I, I agree. I, I completely agree. Um, but yeah, let's uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of the areas. So, obviously, Greece. That is the main focus. Greece and Anatolia, I guess, for the update. So. Um, what, you know, what sort of is the main changes to Greece apart from really just the, you know, the added settlements? Um, I mean, it's, it's been a year since all five or so yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit hard to remember the changes. Mm. Like, I think I'm pretty sure we had the, uh, the oceans, we had the, oh, the, yeah, the Aetolians, the Aetolians, the Achaeans. I think we did not have. Ellis no. or Messene? No, 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 definitely didn't. And um, I have to say that some of these minor Greek city uh, city factions will be unplayable uh, for now because we we don't yet have a full roster. I think that might change. I mean, I don't want to say yeah, of anything course, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's not correct, but I think oh, uh, at least... When we added them, we decided to make them unplayable because obviously we need to add descriptions oh, for, for the factions. We need to add yep. uh, the roster for them to be actually any fun in playing them. Mm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the original idea was to make them unplayable, so but uh, they're going to be... They, they might be playable in the future. Yeah. Uh, I can't promise, but... No. Yeah, but so don't worry guys, I will do a video on how to make these factions playable. So don't worry about that. I'll I'll make a video where we dive into the files and it's it's pretty easy. So you it's don't need to worry easy. about that. Yeah. It's very very easy. It's I think it's just So if you have a, one line and yeah. Yeah, if you've got a hankering for Ellis, then uh you can uh, <laughs> you can dive into the files and I'll show you how to do that. Don't worry. And uh Actually, next week, so next week on RAS Weekends, which is what we're doing every weekend on the run-up to the release date on October 27th, we are having uh, RAS-themed videos uh, on the update. And next week weekend will actually be an overview of all the minor Greeks and mm -hmm. the Greek AOR units uh, version 2, because the first one's actually already out. So you can check that out in the description as well, um, where we go over a load of the new... Uh, sort of minor faction units for Greece. But the second part of that will actually be coming out then, along with a full overview of every single one of the minor Greek factions, where they are, why they exist, <laughs> and, uh, you know, what they're doing there. Why are they there? Why is Akragas down here, for example? That sort of thing. So we um, will have that coming out next week. Yeah, so going back to the changes, I think Ellis and Messene were new. Um, I... I think we have Akanania yeah. as well. Yes, that's new. Um, the icon made from uh, uh, one of our uh, great artists. Just the, the god, uh, I think is uh, Stratos, the river god, who's oh, got cool. a, a horns and ears of a, of a mm. bull. Uh, it's nice. always pretty, a pretty cool symbol. 
we have a, a lot of emergent factions actually so we yeah. have um thessaly that can emerge um from macedon if there's a revolt in thessaly yeah. we have i think uh, uh we have taras in italy as well um yeah uh, as a revolt faction it's currently controlled by by rome um but yeah we have uh we have the cretan factions which are new obviously yep. uh that that's like nosos and gorton and battle Kedonia. royale island for yeah. <laughs> yeah that's if if you read up on the history it was it was uh quite the mess the creed was always quite the mess yeah <laughs> and every everyone was just getting involved trying to control the island uh like the the Italians even came in the 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 Macedonians came in mm. and helped them. the Achaeans I think were also helping people so it's like a huge like almost proxy kind of war between <laughs> the great powers just nice. messing about in in Crete and I think um, this is probably like the thing for this update guys remember that this update is the hellenic world it is is the greeks specifically greece because i know a lot of the hellenic world's already been updated like seleucia ptolemies um that sort of thing bactria pontus yeah but this is like if you want the full experience of this update play in greece because just look at it just look at the screen right now that is going to be absolute chaos it is going to be absolute battle royale everyone dog eat dog allies don't care allies are going to get burnt <laughs> burnt uh, the next second that you uh the next turn it's going to be absolute chaos it's going to be so fun like it's going to be so fun to play on greece so um i would recommend if you are when you get hold of this play on greece or play in thrace um those two areas or anatolia i guess as well if you want to play anatolia but yeah, it's just going to be absolute chaos, an absolute battle royale, and I can't wait. I can't wait for the Greek chaos to ensue. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's it's definitely very fun. Um, Anatolia also has a lot of emergent factions. Yeah. As well, uh, we have a, a bunch of uh, we have Selge as a faction. Um, what is that purple one actually? That's the uh, Anatolians generic. No, 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 the one that you did on Creton Polis. Uh, the, there's a purple and there's a pink. Oh, so yeah, Selge. Selge, Selge yeah, is already Selge there. Selge as well, yeah. You got two. Um, for the Pisidians, we have the Chrysaurian League for the for the Lycian. No, uh, for the Carians, we have the Chrysaurian League. Yeah. Uh, we have Paphlagonia. Uh, we have Heraclea Pontica. We have Trapezus. Yeah, yeah. all these minor greeks and then all the other anatolian factions mm. as well then we added a, 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 the thracian factions as well to yeah. to to make it more chaotic as well and i think that just um, really like these little factions everywhere rather than rebel settlements yeah um, yeah just really just make it so much better in terms of the gameplay because instead of taking a rebel like if you take a rebel settlement on turn 100 it's still going to have the same population the same buildings that it had on turn zero so you've got an actual dynamic world with all these little factions um so much better allows you to you know if you know and then it just just makes it into so much more of a battle royale rather than because with rebels you can take as much time as you want but with the factions they might come after you as well so it just adds so much more jeopardy i think in this region and just makes it so much more fun also a lot of the fun is that you know maybe you're fighting a big thracian faction and there's a lot of they have a lot of enemies around maybe you can ally with yeah you know, the odrishians because uh the the maedi are growing too strong yeah. or something and uh it's not just one thracian faction or one rebel faction but there's a lot of like you know rome diplomacy isn't amazing by any means but that you know it's a lot better than you know just our oh, rebel faction and oh the the one thracian faction expanded to these rebels so now we have to yeah. fight it but it's more like you know it's it's going to be add more complexity and more dynamic um, yeah, diplomatic think... situation to that what i i honestly think the uh what's this the uh, pontic pentapolis they're going to be yeah. an actual player in this region as well because they start 
pretty nice, to be honest. <laughs> like, they've got a lot of decent settlements down here, all trading with each other with ports. So, I honestly think that they're going to be pretty uh, pretty good uh, as a minor nation. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's really cool. It just adds so much more into uh, into the into the region of Greece and Anatolia, and so much more ability for chaos for <laughs> for battle royale and fighting your way out. And think about how rewarding a campaign will be if you, you know, if you start a Sparta and fighting through all these enemies. Like, there's so many enemies around you. Uh, taking them out one by one. That'll be really, uh, really, really, really fun. So, yeah. Um, um, yeah, and then uh, I, for the Roman fans, of course, the next patch, 0.7, is going to be focused all about Italy. What's um, Rome? I've never heard of it. Yeah, that's true. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, right now we're already in the process of making all the new Roman units. And uh, we'll start probably showcasing them as soon as uh, we release uh, 0 0.6. So you can get a, a, a taste of, uh, of what's to come as well. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, uh, all the, this dynamic stuff is going to be um, also going to apply to all the regions we go through and, and um, update as we progress yeah. in terms of the mod. Yeah, no, it's cool. That's good. Yeah, the uh, so all you Roman Roman stands out there, you can uh, you can you can uh, get your hands on some more updates. But for now, enjoy the original Romans, the Greeks. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just yeah, I I'm, mean, I'm just kidding with you, but yeah, <laughs> technically it would be the the original Romans would be the Anatolians and and I own well, I mean now that <laughs> at this point there would be Greeks. But... <laughs> Trojan, you know, um, Aeneas yeah. and stuff. So technically be Anatolian, but yeah. <laughs> um, at least from one of their uh, founding myths. But I don't remember if in 0 0.5 we had the Egyptian revolt. Uh, because that. No, but we, we're going to cover that later. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we're. I, I'm, I'm under express orders not to really mention that sort of stuff Three quite days. yet. <laughs> okay. So uh, I guess oh, I guess we we I I made an oopsie. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's it's not it's not bad because it has been um, revealed Mentioned. on a on a video before. So oh okay, it's not like you've okay. said it for the first time. But um, okay, yeah. I, I, I mean, there's so much working on. Like the team is is very big, and since yeah. my focus is basically trying to get this huge map, <laughs> map, yeah, done. And keep my sanity while doing it. Also, yeah. there's the winter textures. <laughs> yeah, so here we are. Admire. We got winter now. So we um, can see, yeah, so I don't really know what what is revealable and what is not so yeah. far. But <laughs> I mean, if people want to help us test things out, um, they can always join the beta. Yeah. Um, because, um, uh, but yeah, the Egyptian revolt. We will be doing a video on that as well. So uh, uh, you uh, you guys out there you will get a full video on that on how to trigger it how it works how you can stop stop it happening if you are yeah. uh, uh, if you are playing as the ptolemies and don't want to play as egypt but yeah um we, yeah, will, we exactly. will reveal all that sort of stuff so we'll move towards the last few questions then probably so uh what about some special geographical features on the map because i know there's a couple I've added extras in there. So do you want to take us through them? Maybe starting with the Nile? Yeah. Um, so right now, actually, there might be a couple of changes to the, the way the Nile looks uh, based on Casey's actually, uh, actual map. Who do, um, He does a interesting kind of thing. Um, so the first of all, the Nile right now is navigable down to Elephantine. Uh, so all of that and you can see the mesh changes to be an actual river yeah um so now the nile is navigable and now you can cross through the canal of the, the canal of the pharaohs as well yeah so um, down into the um uh, red down sea. below sinai yeah uh, um so the the nile has is also um been modified to be historically um I don't like the term, but historically accurate. Now with the ancient mouths of the Nile, 
yeah. uh, rather than the modern ones and the paths um, and uh, yeah um, it's it's like I think one of the main focuses right now <laughs> for the map for in terms of uh, uh, special geographical features but we have quite a few more so um, um, if you if yeah where do you want me to go yeah if you go to Italy yep um, so right now this people have complained about the look of it but uh, if you go to that weird line below no below go down you'd that, see the uh, weird yeah yeah so um, people have complained about the look of this and it probably will be overhauled a bit before we release but that's meant to be the Pontine Marshes and the Appian Way. So the Appian oh, cool. Way was basically built on a on an elevated causeway mm. through the entire marsh, and uh, uh, it's awesome. tended to f send it to floods every now and then uh, if it wasn't kept, uh, if the marshes weren't drained properly or so, uh, and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Um, now we have that. Now, like you can do the coastal route and the Appian Way, and then the, I think the Latin Way is is the term where you go through the hills between Preneste and. Uh, yeah. Um, if you put on the settlement labels, I think uh, you could take the two cities, Preneste and Fregella. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can As like that's the, that. the, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, that's cool. So, after that we can look at where um what's an interesting place um i worked oh you can go to the mouth of the danube i think uh, uh... it's a bit north where the pentapolis yeah. yeah so that is the historical mouth of the danube mm. right now uh, modern one is silted and different yeah but yeah we've i've re re etched the the ancient mouth of the of the danube where now um old, um Histria is actually on on the coast rather than inland yeah. where it used to be where, where where it is now it's a bit inland in modern world because of the silting of the now ah cool uh, so uh, you... of the of the danube not the now oh, yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> So if anyone's got any sees the map and's like that's not accurate, then it's because it was the ancient uh, the ancient coastline coastline rather than the modern one, which obviously has changed. It's been quite a while since this. I mean, two thousand two hundred and seventy yeah. years ago. So um, no, you can also far. go to the, oh yeah to the Euphrates as well, where it's uh, yeah. to Mesopotamia where also a um, couple of we I had to go through some um uh what's it called um academic articles of of like uh paleo paleogeography i guess and yeah. um, to figure out possible what what the coastline might have looked like as well yeah. and the path of the rivers so now nowadays the persian gulf is a lot more salted in um, and yeah. coastal cities that used to be coastal, uh, like even, even by the time, by this time, at the uh, third century BC, the the Persian Gulf was heavily uh, silted in, and like cities like Uruk or Ur, yeah, were, which probably, well, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, where used used to be coastal cities, now they're uh, no longer that. Wow. Yeah. Um, you can go, I think, to the Netherlands. I think that's also a very nice, nice uh, historical special feature. Yeah. Where it's the, um, yeah. Now it's completely different because of mm. uh, all the polders and all the the land reclamation and the changing, yeah, uh, changes of the of the Rhine and uh, um, I don't know the Isel. I think is the the other name. Mm. Of the name of the other river but yeah these rivers have changed paths and uh, uh quite a bit and again it's from academic articles looking at the historical uh river paths and the historical um uh shape of of the coastline of of the netherlands and you know if you look at it in modern days it's completely different 
yeah cool yeah that's really uh, that's yeah that's just like just goes to show you the extra details that these guys go to this mod team for everything like we've talked about it hundreds of times with the unit the unit um the unit previews like how detailed everything is but like even the campaign map is historical in terms of the shape as, as much as as historical as you can get this engine to be anyway <laughs> so. yeah i mean that's that's also not the only one not the only thing um we have southwest iberia um is like now you have the lacus ligustinos no um below yeah the big like the big bay uh, bay yeah yeah, yeah. the ligustin lake that uh, used to be present um from the from the outlet of the of the Guadalquivir. Oh. um so yeah just a lot of these things where people mention it to me oh this thing used to be like this i'm like okay i'll just uh, <laughs> add it to the map then yeah yeah ah oh, it's awesome um, you know if maybe you live on a tiny island in the aegean or you uh i try to add uh, even if it's just a tiny dot, I'd try to add all the yeah. islands that existed. <laughs> we also have historical volcanoes and volcanic eruptions as well. Yeah, I was going to say, does Etna go off in this like it does in vanilla? Oh, yeah. Uh, like we have, um, I, we have, I think, disasters for Etna. I mean, Etna is, is not very, like, it's it's not an explosive eruption so like yeah. the, the scale of the of the disaster that we have is like zero to one or something oh, okay. Fair. it's like very because that's that's how it how it works basically just yeah puffs out a lot of lava and just uh people just evacuate a bit <laughs> um but uh yeah we do have the vesuvius right there yeah ominously imposing over <laughs> yeah. the port which in this case is uh is uh, pompeii yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> that fish has um, already died from the ash yeah <laughs> um so yeah maybe you you get unlucky and get struck by a historical <laughs> earthquake that just decimated the entire region who oh. knows you know oh well r, um, r and jesus will save us <laughs> um oh. yeah so a lot of a lot of work has been done and and it's still being done because um uh, and that where you looked at in france that's the uh, that's also a historical coastline it's mm. the lake of the pectones or something oh, it's cool. it's called um yeah so a lot of work has been done to and it's still be, being done to um make this geographically historically accurate yeah um, the, a lot of the coastline like I, before release, a lot of the coastlines will be double checked, and then um, there's quite a, there's a couple of maybe interesting uh, changes from the ancient world to the modern one that would also be included that we ha uh, that I haven't added yet. Um, oh, cool. But yeah, um, that's awesome. That's, that's what we're doing. Yeah, brilliant. So. Uh... So yeah, I think I think we're we're pretty much coming towards the end then. So we've been over everything. We've we've gone through the main regions that we're interested in, Anatolia and Greece, and just the battle royale that it's gonna be on there. Let's look at that. That's gonna be so good, so good to play. Um, and we've gone over the geographical regions. We've gone over you know how hard it is to really actually build a map this big as well. Um, but yeah, one last question on gameplay then. So in mm -hmm. terms of the pathfinding for the AI, have you done much changes to that from vanilla in terms of pathfinding or, or how do you test that the pathfinding is working properly with the, uh, with the units uh, and the AI can actually find its way around? Because obviously you added a lot of, a lot of new regions and, and new map into it. So yeah. uh, how would you manage to do that? So um, firstly, it's thanks to the beta testers who mm. looked through because obviously uh, human uh, the, the pathing of the player is the same as the AI um, so uh, would they just tell us oh is this um, should this be possible I can't go through this place or whatever 
Um, but what is done basically uh, is I have a file where I have uh, basically overlays of like the regions, the city locations, yeah. the terrain type, whether it's passable or not. And then look at, and I, I draw a line uh, to represent um, which places can be passed through um, and which places cannot. And if there's like a region that um, does not um, is, is not reachable, uh, I can see it visually, usually at least. Yeah. And uh, I just, I just. Uh, uh, with this with this map, I make a, a line that uh, allows it to be connected to other regions, and then from this, I take it to uh, the, an image editor with the ground types map, and then use that to clear out uh, some of the on, on, um, some of the terrain like uh, mountains that cannot be uh, accessed, yeah. and uh, allow it to to find a path there. And uh, yeah, we try our best to not block off cities, like at least uh, to not have them so that there's no way to access them besides, let's say, one way. But I always try to have like a couple of ways to, a couple of paths for, for the city to be accessible. Yeah. Um, so you can't just have like a traffic jam <laughs> yeah, of in the middle of the mountains. Yeah. Um, some places are a bit more tight because historically they were just in the middle of the mountains. You can see there in like Bagastana and like the Persian region where yeah. it's like um, very tight. But um, that's that's uh, just trying to 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 make it accessible. And then if the AI has problems, we have a lot of people looking at what the AI does yeah. um, when they do beta, t beta testing. And then um, we have Exi, who's uh, a member of our team, who's been doing a lot of work with um, looking through and looking at the AI log, where the the, the game logs what the AI is, is doing yeah. and looks at um, whether or not uh, it's having trouble accessing a region or, or something. And uh, yeah, he's been very helpful in that regard because um, uh, a lot of issues we we had were now, um, uh, he, were now, um, uh, now at least, um, um, if not solved, then at least um, noted. Um, yeah. So that's that's basically what oh, what we do for for the AI to find its way around all these mountains. Yeah. Cool. And uh, one thing I've noticed. Is the AI tends to be a bit of an asshole, and <laughs> if Classic. you have, let's say, a diplomat, yeah, and it's like in between, it's like in between two different paths. Like there's only two ways to go. The AI sometimes just goes and like sticks an army in one of the in front of the diplomat, and so you can only either go backwards or you just. <laughs> prevented from moving yeah. sometimes you, you're actually just completely trapped from <laughs> <laughs> the ai cool. the ai gonna ai right so yeah <laughs> ah right well we move on to the last couple of questions then um so yeah p more personal questions really so what would you say are you most proud of with this map then Ooh, that's interesting i i think it's the geographical accuracy of, yeah. of it. Um, in terms of the mountains, you can actually like um, you can actually look at, let's say, where you live. Maybe I don't know, where, uh, like not specifically you, because it's probably <laughs> quite flat in the UK. But I don't know. Um, and you can actually see maybe oh, there's this this mountain that's nearby, and I know it. And uh, you can actually identify it usually mm. in the game. Like I think, I think we have K two. Ben Nevis. No, I'm not sure. I mean, Ben Nevis is not that big, but uh, no, no, <laughs> compared to the other ones. Uh, but I think we have K two. I don't think we go up to Everest. 
Um, uh, and you can certainly see, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the Himalayas, everything is, is huge. But, yeah, uh, I was going to say, which one's K2? Well, K2's got a quite it's, distinct shape, though, hasn't it? Uh, you can, it's probably the tallest one. It yeah. is the tallest <laughs> one, definitely. Um, I, but yeah, if, you, if like, at least, uh, I can tell you well where, uh, Elbrus is, at least, you know, and the Caucasus. Um, it's very, very distinctive, um... You could go across. And it's, yeah, so it's on the west. West, and you can... Ooh, yeah, you can see the big peak, right? A bit center-right. Um, yep. Yeah, exactly. That's Elbrus. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, and so that's... I, I really like the fact that you can yeah. actually, you know... Um, because the, the way the mesh generation... So Rome Remastered, what it does is it has... Uh, you generate a, a mesh or a, a 3D model of the map. Yeah. And uh, that makes it so that we can just use real geographical data for it. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, and just uh, generate it like that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, some some of the rivers had to be moved just so, so they could yeah. be passed through, but, you know, um, I think... It's just making it geogra as geographically accurate as possible. It's always so nice to see, even if in in the battle maps as well. Oh yeah. Um, if you like, go to Alexandria. Uh, I mean, not <laughs> if you like fight a siege in Alexandria. You can actually see Lake Mariotis from there, and yeah. also the the lighthouse and everything. And it's always so nice to see that. I think. Oh, definitely. It's, yeah. It's very nice. Um, you, I think we, I, I did a, I had a, I spent uh, quite a, some time trying to figure out a way to have Thermopylae, um, which is uh, also very nice. It's a yeah. bit further up. Um, I think the city of Malos is there. If, uh, oh no, Lamia, Lamia, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you have like a tiny. <laughs> you have like the the mountain pass where yeah. the Greek cities guy is, and then you have the coastal route, which is the ah yeah, nice the, the Thermopylae, and so it's it's always very nice to see you know all this stuff. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. That is really cool. I didn't realize you that you'd put <laughs> genuine mountains in <laughs> into it. I thought it was just like just draw draw it on. That's no, so no, cool. no. That's cool. Um, it is real geographical data, so we use, uh, for instance, I, well, uh, I'm the one who does it. I, I say we just because I'm used to yeah. uh, academic we, we. Uh, but uh, um, I use ge uh, uh, climate data from the uh, urban classification and uh, real soil types from the soil grids to 50. Uh, data set uh, to define what's high fertility, low fertility, yeah, uh, etc. So yeah, it's a lot of real world data, and oh, cool! Uh, it's always it's always nice to see. Obviously, we I can't really promise that it's fully a hundred percent accurate to the ancient world because climate probably changed. Yeah, uh, a bit. Uh, I'm not using. I'm not even using modern. I'm using like up to 1970 climate. So it should be quite accurate to the. Yeah. To the ancient world, we had the same amount of temperature or so. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, average average world temperature. I mean. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, so you know, soils soils get moved. There's. Um, silting, there's deposition erosion, mm. but you know it's can't like you can't, you can't really expect a hundred percent perfect recreation. But with what we have, it's it's like I I try to do the best with, yeah, with whatever is awesome. available. No, it's good. It's so good. <laughs> it's really good. And then, so that's what you're most proud of. And say if you've played on the map, what would you say? That you like the most about it not necessarily what makes you most proud but what do you like the most playing on the map hmm, that's interesting i mean it's just i think half of it is just 
all the settlements that are there. Mm. And uh, when you go into like a battle or a siege, you can see them from a distance in the distance. Yeah. And that's always really nice. I always like that um, in OG Rome and now in this, it's always so nice that you can like fight a battle kind of outside of Athens and see like Piraeus and Athens yeah. uh, in the distance. Or, you know, I don't know, the fact that it's the, when you go into battle, it's like more or less geographically accurate like if you go to to armenia and, and fight a battle there you're gonna have the the yeah. geography of that pretty much uh i mean it's it's obviously not perfect because it's, the battle map generation is is a very complicated thing yeah um but uh, yeah it's you can still spot landmarks and and everything it's always always nice oh um, yeah it's, I, it's so it's 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 so good with uh you know rome remastered and then obviously with the additions that you guys have made like yeah i love i love being able to see the other city or or like a mountain that was on the map you know yeah. actually represented in the in the battle map and stuff like that yeah so. um i think actually maybe i uh, go going back to the to the previous thing um with what i'm most proud of is that um, be able to use actual geographical data, yeah. but because the the bat battle map regeneration is based on is not based on this mesh, but an actual like um, image files. Oh, okay. um, the generation of those Im image files to make it so that we can use the, the generated data, but also uh, make it so that uh, the battle maps are, uh, let's say, if you have a, a a lake in a in a high plateau, it's not like you have the the steep hill at the top and then there's a massive cliff for the lake but yeah. because of the transformations of the geographical data now it's like uh more uh you could you, you you still use the geographical data and it's more realistic but it's also like uh more playable let's say or more like yeah um it, it's it's well adjusted to generated in battle map that looks good and plays good but also using the geographical information yeah yeah cool fantastic so last question final question <laughs> yeah is there the anything million. more for this map is and what's next with it i know we said at the start that it's pretty much just going to be tweaks is that what's going forward is that you being able to sit down with a whiskey and a cigar or <laughs> what's next with all of this uh, work on the map um so after the release you mean or before release just ask, uh so going forward yeah going forward after release well it would have to be probably um what we wanted to do was uh uh generate at least what i wanted to do my goal was to create unique buildings for all these cities. Yeah. Like, for instance, uh, Dodona, the 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 have the 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 oracle of Zeus at Dodona. Um, you know, uh, interesting tidbits for for each for each region that we can find and yeah. and add to the game. And um, I think a lot of it also having uh going through the list of cities and uh uh researching very in depth in in this way uh uh so like doing a second round of more in depth research for fertilities yeah. for buildings for, for just population sizes yeah um uh right now just because we need to release and uh, I I hell has done a, a great job of just uh, going through the the cities and uh, and uh, differentiating them enough that it's not like the same settlement over and over again. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, of course, um, there's no not enough time for researching uh, everything so in depth. You know, maybe they had uh, maybe the city had a famous uh, theater. Maybe it had mm. I don't know 
uh, grape port or whatever, but yeah. um, a big well, mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's also true. Like resources, that's yeah. that's a very important point. Actually, I didn't I didn't remember, but resources are very important. That we will we'll have to to do that uh, in the future because basically we imported the resources from I think Mundus Magnus perhaps yeah. and or or uh, no I think we placed them in the small map and then took them from the small map to the big map and we haven't been able to you know redistribute these uh all of these on some of them are uh, uh some regions don't have resources that they should have some regions mm. do etc um yeah historical mining sites etc yeah uh, cool. so it's very important as well yeah also adding more resources as well probably more resource types yeah that would be cool yeah, but it's it's a lot of work to do, and um, we're just <laughs> yeah, I mean, going as fast as we can. You know? I mean, you've you've made you've made sixteen hundred regions, bro. I think, <laughs> I think yeah. uh, entitled to a little break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll end it there then. That's been really enlightening. I hope you guys at home have enjoyed that in depth discussion of how such a large map <laughs> has gone from inception to creation pretty much and the struggles the tribulations and the benefits of having such a glorious campaign map um and yeah thank you very much joel for joining me mm, thank you for having me again no, it's it was a pleasure absolutely fine it was great so thank you very much for joining us anyone watching do check out the uh, playlist down in the description below. That will have all of these RTR Imperium Serectum weekends that are on the run-up to the release date. All the videos from that in there. Every single weekend, you're going to get new RAS content that is going to be revealing new gameplay features, new bits like the map, of course, like we've seen this weekend. Uh, and you can check all that out down there. So thank you very much to, uh, for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you all again on the next video.